Anthony Joshua, heavyweight champion of the world, kid from London, phenomenal career. What he's achieved is unbelievable. His fight against Klitschko, one of the best I've ever seen. That unbelievable what he's came from. He started boxing late, but we all, we all know now we get charged with yeah. weed, I think, and you represented him in that case yeah. and won him that case. That like, you saved the guy's life, and he's probably thank is thankful for it. I'd imagine. But how did that he case is. come about? <laughs> Um, because of my past in boxing, um, and my, 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 there's a solicitor that I work with all the time. Um, I refer to him as my business partner. Technically, I shouldn't refer to him that way. Um, because we, we have two separate businesses that are just fairly interlinked. Um, but he is a, he's a former boxer. He used to box in Scotland. Um, I, I used to box a lot and, you know, have a long career in boxing as well. And we were introduced about... By my head of by my head of chambers, he was introduced to an awful lot of barristers who claimed to have boxed. They'd all basically been to boxer size. Um, so he, he he agreed to meet me on sufferance. We met each other. We we knew within thirty seconds of speaking that actually we both had, and it was true in this case. So we ended up getting on very well. And over time, he started giving me a lot of work because a barrister's work comes from a solicitor. He started giving me a lot of work. I started sending a lot of my contacts to him to then come back to me. Um, because you can't go to a barrister unless you go through a solicitor. And we started working together a hell of a lot. <clears throat> we were both very well known in the boxing world, him more than me. He was very well known in the boxing world because he did an awful lot of contract work for them. Now, I don't know anything about contract work, so I would look after people when they got in trouble, either disciplinary in the sport, so doping or <clears throat> going too far in the ring, much rarer, harder to do that, uh, or getting in trouble outside. <clears throat> but um, he... He was approached about Josh. Now, we, we'd never heard of him. We, we knew he'd won the ABAs at this point, and we'd, you know, I think we had heard the name, but we didn't know who he was. But it was in 2011. We were approached by his, um, his coach at Finchley Boxing Club, and they said, look, we've got this kid. He's got himself in trouble. <clears throat> he could be fighting in the Olympics next year, but in order to qualify for the Olympics, he has to fight in the Europeans. And the Europeans are coming up in a few weeks. And because of the trouble, they have taken his license away. And so he can't fight in the qualifying championship until this is resolved. So we got it expedited, got it all sorted out for as quick as we possibly could. And we went to court for trial. And when we went to court for trial, oh, pardon me, when we went to court for trial, I... I couldn't win the case. We knew we couldn't actually win the case in the circumstances. So we had a very sensible conversation with the prosecutor and a sensible conversation with the judge. And the conversation we basically had was, look, yeah, we understand that he's committed the offense. We understand that it is what it is. And I don't mind saying that publicly because obviously he's been very straight about it himself. He's on record, he's in a book. Otherwise I'd have to be much more circumspect. But the reality is he'd done what he'd done. But the punishment was going to was going to end his career. The punishment would have ended his career. The punishment would have he would never have fought in the Europeans. Without fighting in the Europeans, he couldn't have fought in the Olympics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, on the back of all of that, um, I, I just fronted that up to the judge and said, "You know, the reality is, we'll have to fight this case, and then we'll lose this case. But if he was to plead guilty to possession, which obviously he's guilty of as well." If you're typically guilty of possession, you could give him the harshest possible period of unpaid work. <clears throat> that would allow him to get his license back. It would allow him to fight in the Europeans. It would allow him to fight in the Olympics. It would allow him in his future to fight in America, which he could never have done if he'd had a, a supply on his record. It allows him to have his life. It also allows him to spend 300 hours in boxing clubs in a few months' time once he's famous helping kids who might otherwise be on the streets. So it allows it to be paid forward. And as an outcome for a case like this, for a kilo of cannabis, as an outcome for a case like this, surely that's a far more positive outcome to society than sending him into a prison for a short amount of time, ruining his future, no career left. Surely that's better. The judge agreed. Prosecutor ultimately agreed with some encouragement from the judge. And that's the route we went down. And as you say, that the next day, Scott, the, got the solicitor, jumped on the train up to Cardiff, got before the ABAs, basically made the same submission, say, look, he's, he's not guilty of supply. 
He's just guilty of possession. You can give him his license back. They did that. He went to the Europeans. He came second. But second was good enough to qualify for the Olympics, and the rest is history. And you mentioned the Klitschko fight. He gave me ringside seats to that, and I couldn't go because of a bloody family wedding. <laughs> No, nah. and I sat at the I sat at the van, and it wasn't even my family; it was my wife's family. I sat at the wedding, watching the fights with my wife kicking me under the table. I was like, look, I didn't go to the fight. I'm at least watching the fight <laughs> because they didn't start boxing <clears throat> till late. Now that's why I've got to give him so much credit for everything mm. he's achieved. He's just a kid from London. Yeah, he tried to, that survival mode, and you know yourself in these streets, it's drink, drugs, violence. Yep. That that was the norm like, and so especially had, where he's from he's from Watford which yeah, is yeah and to come through that and to then be champion of the world like yes he's had a blip the last yeah. year or so but that's that's boxing for you especially the calibre of boxers yeah. now and it's unbelievable what he's achieved and how much that case there is outpathed as whole life man but well, it's, it's, it's what they call a hinge of battle moment I mean well, you go back to a saying about what ifs and it's a what if or it's a hinge of battle there's a moment that you can pick. It's very rare you can do it, but you can see in his life, you can pick that one moment that changed everything. Uh, and and it is, it's that moment. Mm -hmm. How was it seeing him winning the belts? Like, um, did, you, it, did you feel anything for that? Or was it just another case? No, I did feel some, I, I felt, I actually did feel big, um, well about that, more so than any other cases, uh, simply because I got to boast about it a little bit, <laughs> but I'm not going to lie. But mainly because we played our part in that. You know, we actually genuinely played our part in that. And what what he was doing was exactly what I told the judge he would do. So it's kind of vindication, validation for what I'd said. Because it was right. You know, often people think we just stand up and say whatever's going to work. And of course we try what we try, everything we can within reason for our clients. Uh, but sometimes you are telling the truth entirely. So I mean, some, there's exaggeration and there's elaboration and there's all the different things. We never lie. Um, you can't lie. We absolutely, I and mean, people may, may not believe that, but we don't. If a client tells us they're guilty, we can't represent them. Uh, you know, it's, it's, the rules are simple. And we wouldn't take the risk of doing that for someone we don't know. Say, well, yeah, you've told me that, but just don't tell anyone you told me that. Because the chances are they will one day tell someone they told you that. So you don't take those risks. Um, but quite often you will put across the best case scenario and to see the best case scenario especially when it is very much the best best case scenario you've ever given because mm. it's not every day i get to stand up and say but this man could be the heavyweight champion of the world mm. i got to say that one day and then he became that 